This baby is three days old and has a severe case of infection. She's struggling not to become one of the nearly four million newborn babies who die within the first four weeks of life. Most of these deaths are occurring in sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, and in most of those countries, the deaths are occurring without any paper trail. Most of these babies are born, they don't get a birth certificate, and they don't get a death certificate. And so those babies aren't visible in life or in death. In Africa, four in every hundred babies don't make it to the end of their first month of life. The majority of these short lives go undocumented. This is Malawi, one of the poorest countries on the African continent. And 7,000 kilometers away, this is Nepal, one of the poorest countries on the Asian continent. Poverty isn't the only thing Malawi and Nepal have in common. Both are on track to meet the United Nations Millennium Development Goal of reducing deaths in children by two thirds by 2015. Malawi is one of only two low-income countries in sub-Saharan Africa to be on track, and Nepal, one of only two in South Asia. Dr. Joy Lorne is a leading expert in newborn health. For 20 years, she's worked with many organizations to highlight and reduce the burden of newborn deaths. Today, she's starting a journey to find out how these two very different countries have achieved this goal and what problems still lie ahead just landing in Africa and seeing red earth and trees and so on, it, it just yeah, it always catches me. I kind of registered recently that it's 20 years since I first landed in Malawi, and for me, that was really my first experience of newborn care in Africa. Every year, there are more than a million babies worldwide who die from being born too early, being premature. Joy is visiting Boila, the maternity hospital in the capital, Lolongwe. She's going to find out how a simple solution can work to halve the number of deaths due to premature birth. The solution is called kangaroo mother care. Mothers like Stella are taught how to dress their small babies and carry them against their skin all day, allowing feeding and warmth. That's how it is mm -hmm. done. Then maybe we're going to just help with the legs. Mm -hmm. the legs so you're the... spreading the legs out. Yeah, you have to spread the legs like this. More. This baby was born three months early. The high incidence of malaria in Malawi contributes to at least 13% of babies being born prematurely. Both funds and staff are in short supply here, so kangaroo mother care is perfect, as no incubator or electricity is needed. So far, I can say no so sophisticated equipment has yeah. been used on this baby, mm -hmm. because the mother's body will act as a heater mm -hmm. to the baby. And the other thing is yeah. the bonding. Okay. Yeah, the baby also feels more secure. Right. being with the mother in okay. kangaroo position, rather than the baby being left in the cot or in the incubator and in the mother being away doing other things. But with kangaroo, oh, it's good. In the bed opposite, there is another woman called Stella, whose baby was less than one kilogram when born. What do you think her chances would have been maybe 10 years ago before you had kangaroo mother? No chances of survival. Mm. Even compared to incubator care, kangaroo mother care, halves the risk of dying for these babies. Seeing a baby in front of you that, you know, was, was born at six months of pregnancy, three months too early, weighing 800 grams, uh, able to go home, that is a reality as well as the data. But this is only one part of Malawi's newborn story. Another part starts somewhere like this, Dower District Hospital. Women come from far and wide to give birth here, camping out with their mothers for up to a month until they deliver. The word is, hospital delivery is becoming the norm. 60% of women are making this choice. It's giving them and their babies a better chance. The four million babies that die every year Three million of those happen in the first week of life. 
but in fact almost two million happen in the first couple of days. That's really the critical time. This is Loveness. Her baby boy has not yet been named and won't be until he's at least one week old. This is typical in countries like Malawi. A baby is so vulnerable in the first week of life that it's considered bad luck to name them at this time. Loveness has been in the hospital for two weeks, so she delivered three days ago. She delivered a baby boy, uh, she delivered during the night. The mother had no complications after delivery, and the baby as well was just fine. They're having their final health check before they go home. Owen is checking to ensure that this little boy is free from infection, one of three main causes of death for newborns. Strategies like these have helped Malawi to reduce newborn deaths by a quarter since 2000. The baby has weighed 3,300 grams. According to the assessment, everything is okay. He can go home. It's time to go home. Her mother, who has been staying with her, is there to provide a helping hand, along with her sister, who's come to visit. Encouraging women to seek care in hospitals like Dawa has been key to Malawi's progress in newborn health. However, a heavy burden of disease and a shortage of medical staff is a major challenge for the country. The government now is building more health centers which are well equipped. We have also scaled up the training of midwives. Now we are training about three, four hundred midwives every year. And we hope over time most of these health centers will be manned by skilled attendants. These skilled attendants are replacing traditional birth attendants, whose practice is now illegal in Malawi. So we are now in the process of changing the roles of traditional birth attendants to become more or less like a referral. If they see a pregnant woman, they should be able to refer that mother to a health centre. Loveness is returning home to see her family and introduce them to the new arrival. This is her sixth child. The first four were delivered with the traditional birth attendant. Her fifth died. This time she was afraid for herself and her baby. Despite Loveness's best intentions, she thought the baby was arriving early and she might have to have another home delivery. She went to the traditional birth attendant, who arranged for an ambulance to come. Despite Malawi's achievements, a Malawian baby is still ten times more likely to die than a baby born in Europe or North America, a figure that's even worse in many other developing countries. What keeps me going is having, I mean, literally millions of babies dying that don't need to die. We have solutions, but we're just not making enough progress. Coming up in part two, Joy travels 7,000 kilometers to Nepal, where a very different approach to newborn health is being taken. But what challenges still remain for this diverse country where cultural norms and geographical distances lie in the way, and 80% of women give birth at home. Every year, nearly four million babies die within their first four weeks. Their short lives are often unrecorded, leaving them invisible. Action in Malawi. <laughs> yeah.
Dr Joy Lorne is on a journey which has taken her to Malawi to find out how one of the poorest African nations has managed to reduce the number of newborn deaths. Seven thousand kilometers away, a similar tale is unfolding. Nepal is also on track to meet the Millennium Development Goal for child survival. But here they've taken a very different approach. In Nepal, the household is central to a woman's life, and over 80% of births take place at home. Joy's journey is taking her to the fertile flatlands of the Tara, where she's going to find out what's being done for mothers and their babies. She's starting in here, a referral hospital where critically ill babies are brought in. There are three main causes of death amongst newborns, complications from being born prematurely, infection, and complications at birth. If any of these problems are severe, the safest place for the baby to be is in a hospital like this. This first baby here was admitted just yesterday, and we can see it's really quite severely affected. The baby's very floppy, um, hasn't been able to feed at all, so is, is having a drip to give uh, sugar to the baby. We have three different levels of how babies are affected after birth complications um, and the third level is the most severe and this baby is a baby who has been severely affected by complications at the time of birth. The second biggest killer of newborns is infection and we know that in Nepal that's the leading killer of newborns and here we have a, a baby who has got infection um, and if we look at the baby's chest, you can see that when the baby's breathing, the, a lot of the chest is being sucked in. The baby's been struggling a bit to breathe. But we can see that this baby's nice and active, and the baby, in fact, has had a, a several days of antibiotics and is really improving. In Nepal, 64% of under five deaths are newborns, double that of Malawi. Here, like in other countries, common traditions around newborns can cause harm. Often a woman and her baby are considered impure after birth and are isolated. Sometimes she's expected to give birth in the cow shed. A new government program is now trying to promote safe practices around newborn health. Whilst it encourages hospital care, the focus is on the community. Dr. Pradhan, Director General of Health, explains. It is very difficult to bring sick uh, newborn to the health facilities because of access, because of tradition, because of uh, cultural taboos. So we, ha we must provide uh, that sort of uh, services there at home. At the heart of this program are the female community health volunteers like Bhagwati. Since 1990, Nepal has reduced child deaths by 61% and this volunteer program has played an important role. Every month, she meets with the women of childbearing age in her own community. Traditionally in Nepal, women marry young and go to live with their husband's family. This decision is usually made by the mother-in-law. If there's no skilled attendant there, problems can arise. Although Bhagwati is not medically qualified, she's been trained so she can recognize any danger signs and is working hard to encourage women to go to hospital. The volunteers provide practical advice for the women before and after birth. It's morning in Bhagwati's village. It. 
It's time for her to visit her most recent case. She's going to check up on Prema, who gave birth to a healthy girl nine days ago. Prema gave birth at home with the help of Bhagwati, although past tragedies meant she would have preferred to have gone to hospital. Unlike Malawi, there is no system in Nepal that allows mothers to stay at the hospital long before they give birth. If they deliver unexpectedly, they often rely on volunteers like Bhagwati. This time, there were no complications, and her baby is healthy. Bhagwati is there to advise Prema on what she should do next. For now, Prema can spend her time looking after her healthy baby. This includes rubbing mustard oil on her little one, a traditional practice in Nepal. Putting oil on the baby's skin is harmless, but many put it on the cord after birth, which can cause infection. The volunteer teaches the mother to go to the nearest health post if the baby gets ill. Joy has come to a local health post where most cases of newborn infection can be handled. This is Sushila. Her little boy has had an infection on his cord, possibly caused by mustard oil. The midwife is giving him his injection of antibiotics. Fresh cord is sitting there. It's like a, an amazing come and grow on me medium for bacteria. So a very common source of infection. But it looks now that this baby has recovered uh, nicely. The cord is healing up well. So being able to have antibiotics where she can come in and out, um, uh, I'm sure have been very important in saving this baby's life. Sushila will return tomorrow for her baby's last injection. For now, she can go home, knowing that her child is on the mend. But some cases of infection are more severe. A critically ill baby has been brought into the clinic by a relative. Her mother is too sick to leave the house. The baby girl is three days old and has not fed for over 24 hours. She has a severe case of infection. So what's the temperature? 42. 42. So 42 is extremely high. Yes. A normal temperature is about 37 degrees centigrade. Next, the little girl's breathing rate is checked. Around 60 is normal. No, 88. 88. So this small baby has only three days old and has got severe infection. The baby really needs to have treatment. They're going to give the first dose of antibiotics here and the advice is that the baby needs to go to the neonatal intensive unit. This little girl is in grave danger. She's put in the kangaroo mother care position, whilst Joy's concern grows about the situation. So how will she get from here to the hospital? I mean, the baby can't feed. Yeah. Unfortunately, because uh, the grandmother um, and the mother don't have transport to be able to go to Nepal Ganj, they uh, feel like they can't accept the advice for referral. So being able to give antibiotics near home is, is excellent and a great principle, but if the baby's really sick, uh, then those babies definitely need to be able to be referred. With no access to transport, the baby's chances are slim. Joy manages to arrange a car and sends the baby to hospital immediately. Tragically, the baby doesn't survive the journey. Today, in Malawi and Nepal, 
a child's chances of surviving the first month are the same and better than ever before. Though dramatically different, both countries have brought care closer to families and established systems that can give hope for families with newborns all around the world. Loveness has been home for three days. She is being visited by the health worker to check that everything is fine. The risk is still very high for this little baby and the next few weeks of life will be critical for him. But for now, he is healthy and surrounded by hope. Women don't have to die, babies don't have to die. There are countries like Malawi and like Nepal that are making a difference for their women and for those children. Any baby who's being born in Africa or in South Asia who may have a low chance now still should have that chance. They should have someone to shout for them, should be able to get those services and they should be able to survive. Loveness's little boy is nearly a week old and has passed the most dangerous time for a newborn. He has been named Mazunzo and has been given a chance to make himself heard in the world. <laughs> <laughs> 